Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is a great game and it gives you a massive vibrant world to explore. However, sometimes it can be a little confusing. So I'm going to show you 10 things you should know so you get the most out of the game. This information is great for everyone, new to the game or Navi veterans. The first and most basic thing to know is not to rush and make sure you loot everything you can. You will find powerful weapons, gear and much more. For example, there is a shotgun you can loot at the very start of the game as soon as you unlock the SID hacking tool, which gives massive power early on. Even looting all the Navi camps will provide you with lots of food that saves you time needed to forage for it later on. And you will always be needing food as eating keeps your energy levels high and allows that automatic health regeneration. If you continue to loot all the time, you will quickly realize that you run out of space in your inventory due to all of your looted items. There is no dismantling or selling function in this game, but instead of dropping it on the floor to clear space, put it in the clan contribution baskets. These baskets are very easy to find and there is one in every small and large village. For every item you donate, it will increase your clan favor. Clan favor is like a currency you can use to purchase powerful items such as weapons and armor from the major villages. You'll be able to get exquisite rarity gear from these vendors. Plus, it's important to clear space in your inventory, otherwise it'll stop you from collecting any more items until there is some free space. You can increase your inventory space by spending skill points in the maker skill tree. However, you still run out of space if you don't contribute your items to the clan baskets. Each Navi village also requests one item in particular, and if you donate that item to them, it will significantly increase the clan favor you receive. These donations can also reward you with cosmetics like hair colors. Due to all the villagers wanting a specific item, I find it beneficial to fly around and locate as many villagers as you can to unlock their clan contribution baskets. If you have unlocked a large number of them, and the more the better, you can track their requests in the quest log. So if you've been doing a lot of looting as you play, then you'll have more than likely a lot of items that the villagers are requesting. To make your life easier, scroll through the clan contributions list and find what items you already have, and then fast travel to the village that wants it and repeat the process. If you keep doing this and looting as you play, you should have a lot of these items free for you to use. Plants in Pandora can give you big gameplay boosts like extra health, skill points, and ancestor skills. If you are even near these plants, I highly recommend making a detour and collecting them. This is so important in the early game as it can be the difference between life and death. The Tarsu saplings provide a skill point which stacks up quickly as they are really easy to collect. The Bell Sprig plants increase your maximum health which will really help you for those fights against the RDA. And the most powerful is the Tarsu flowers that will unlock a powerful ancestor skill. These ancestor skills are game changers, so it's a good idea to hunt for these plants on your Ikran to get ahead. The Tarsu flowers are in hard to reach locations, but I'll show you an easier way to locate them. You can also press the interact button on the location, so it's shown on the map. I've spoken a lot about finding loot or rare plants, and this is made easier by understanding how to use your map properly. The default view is good, but a lot of the areas we want to see are hidden behind cliffs and sometimes fog. You can rotate your map to reveal hidden points of interest. This is also helpful as it helps when things are elevated high above the ground level. For example, the Boundless Range has lots of high floating cliffs with all sorts of special things hidden in them. At first glance, it's hard to see which floating cliff your item is on. So if you rotate it, you can really see the change in elevation and pinpoint which cliff you want. And then you can zoom in to clarify even further. Our next point is the quickest way to get the Ikran and the order you should prioritize your gameplay. When you start the game, I recommend progressing the main story until you reach the Take Flight quest. Once you complete this and get your Ikran, it's the easiest way to explore all of Pandora and collect the powerful loot and plants. I wouldn't do many side missions until you've unlocked your Ikran. It'll make things a lot easier for you and save you a lot of time. When on foot and near villages, you will often stumble upon a small group of Navi that are foraging or hunting. Make sure you detour from what you are doing and interact with them. It is very quick and they will reward you with very rare loot such as food, crafting materials or armor. This stuff they give you saves you so much time foraging for it yourself 
And more than often, these items are actually the items the clan contribution baskets are requesting, so you know what to do with them. Sometimes the Navi won't give you an item, but they'll give you some important information on nearby plants or RDA activity. Make sure you regularly visit the special vendor at the home tree at the Ikran landing area. This vendor refreshes her stock every day and the items are not able to be collected in any other way. She often sells rare cosmetics and Ikran cosmetics. You will need to purchase these items with Satari beads. The only way to collect these beads is to accept and complete the challenges she offers you. The challenges vary in difficulty but most are generally pretty easy. Just try to accept the easiest first and that way your progress will be tracked. Some challenges include walking a certain distance on foot or killing feral animals with the shotgun. Even if you don't like her stock, complete the challenges so you can stock up on the beads for when you see something you might like. Cooperative is great fun in Pandora. You can join a friend and take down the RDA together. Or you can join online groups to search for a cooperative partner to play with. You must complete the Aranahe clan main story quest to gain access to cooperative though. If you want to squad up together and play cooperatively with me, let me know your username and I'm always keen to play with more people. We can take down the RDA scum together. Lastly is the stealth combat. Stealth combat is very difficult, especially when you're first starting out, but the easiest way to achieve it and remain undetected is to unlock the eject ancestor skill and then use your SID hacking tool to disable the RDA AMPs. Then you can easily pull them out and move on to the next target. I've done an in-depth stealth guide and I'll link that in the description below so you can get more information. Just remember to remain undetected when clearing RDA sites so you receive that bonus loot. That's the top 10 tips you should know. Thank you for watching and I hope you found it helpful. If you did want to play in Pandora together, let me know your username so we can squad up. Please like the video if you learnt something new. I'll be releasing my Ikran Mastery Guide soon, so I hope to see you there. Bye!